Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? We can. How does it go? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? I think I, I'm, I'm maybe not coming across. I, I feel as if it's not coming across very loud, but you can hear me. Um, all right. Um, so good evening and welcome to the Surbiton uh, Neighbourhood Committee, whether um, here in person or watching on the, got, we've got a, a live webcast. So I'm Councillor Alison Holt and I'm chairing the meeting this evening. We have some COVID safe measures in place this evening. I would ask everybody present to wear a face covering unless exempt. I would remind everyone to make sure that their microphones are switched on when they speak and ask everyone to speak clearly and at reasonable pace into the microphones. Hand sanitizer has been provided on the desks at, and at strategic points around the building. And, I, and again, I would encourage everyone to make use of this. In the event of an emergency and the sounding of an alarm, the emergency evacuation procedure is to leave by the exit and congregate at the back of the building in the car park. Anyone requiring assistance should remain in their seats and an officer will assist you from the building. This meeting is being filmed for live broadcast on the Council's website and an archived version will be available to view on the Council's website after the meeting finishes. The broadcast will be suspended during any adjournments and proceedings and if the committee resolves to consider information as exempt business. Please can everyone present in the meeting ensure that their mobile phones are switched off or on silent mode for the duration of the meeting. We'll just go on to um, the agenda. And the first item we have on the agenda is the appointment of, of, of a vice chair. Um, do we have any nominations? Councillor Green? Uh, I'd like to uh, nominate Councillor Hilary Gander. Thank you. So we've got a, a seconder as well, Councillor Yoganathan. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, um, Councillor Gander, you're now Vice Chair of the Committee with me. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, as it, everyone else will, well, most people will know, um, Hilary G Councillor Gander is my fellow Ward Councillor, and so we look forward to um, working with her on, on as Vice Chair with, and helping me with this committee. Um, the next thing on the agenda is the um, public questions. I don't think we've been, there's any public questions been registered this evening, Councillor Tracy? No. No, no public questions. So if we move on to um, apologies for absence, I think we, have we got some, I can see that there are some people not here, so have you got some apologies? Yes, um, tonight we have apologies from Councillor Shashila Abraham, who was engaged on mayoral duties tonight. Councillor Self, Councillor Sweeney, and Councillor Falchikov Sumner may be appearing late. Thank you. So thank you for that. Um, and we move on to item four, which is declaration of interest. Has any member got anything that they would like to declare? Yeah, Councillor White. Thank you very much, um, Chair. The item tonight on the grant um, to Voices of Hope and Brightbox. In my working life, I am a partner of um, the Brightbox um, scheme. Um, I have nothing at all to do with this application tonight, and um, my organisation will not benefit from this. Uh, so I, I do feel I can participate in the item. Okay, so thank you, Councillor White. If we move on to item five, it's the, the minutes of previous meetings. Uh, we've got um, two sets of committee meetings, uh, mi minutes for the 30th of June and the 22nd of July. Is, um, is there anything anyone would like to, to raise in these meetings and in these minutes? Don't see anyone, so we'll take that as agreed and um, I'll sign those later. Um, we'll move on to item six, which is uh, petitions. Ha have we received any petitions this evening? No. 
Thank you. Right. Well, now, now we get on to item um, seven, which is the community grants. And I'd ask uh, James Geach to, to present these. I'm very pleased uh, that we have um, our applicants along this evening to, to present these items because it's, it's lovely to, to hear um, from the applicants and, and also and some of them returning applicants um, to hear how, how the money has been used and, and the benefits that you've got from it. So, so it's, it's very good to, to hear that. So um, I'll pass over to, to James to, to introduce this further. Thank you, Chair. It's good to be back. Um, once again, we're asked to look at some community grants program applications. We've got two uh, neighbour community grants for the committee to consider. Um, the first is £2,916 uh, to Voices of Hope, um, as set out in paragraphs 5 to 14 of the report. Um, as you can see there, um, the applicant meets all the minimum criteria for this grants program um, and has put forward uh, what, in the Office of Views, a very strong application um, for a neighbour community grant. Um, as many members will know, Voices for Hope is a Kingston-based not-for-profit charity which have applied um, for this funding to continue their Bright Box project at, in Surbiton during the forthcoming school year. Um, I have put in the background of the report a little bit about um, Voices for Hope's history, um, but skipping on to paragraph eight on the Bright Box project itself. Um, this is a weekly meal kit um, with all the ingredients and an easy-to-follow recipe um, to enable families to enjoy preparing and eating an advanced meal. Um, each recipe costs less than five pounds to cook for a family of five and includes at least two vegetables and uses a variety of cooking skills. Uh, this provides a healthy meal for the whole family and builds confidence and resilience through um, learning cooking skills for both children and their parents. Um, during 2001 and the spring and summer terms, Voices for Hope sent out on average 290 boxes each week to over 20 schools and five youth organizations across Kingston and Whitson Borough. Um, and we've got a few images that show um, the bright boxes being prepared. Um, I'd like to come back um, after we've heard from the applicant, but to in order for them to describe the project more fully, I'd like to invite um, Mr. Nick, Nick Dawson, who's kindly come along uh, to talk more about how the program works and what the team does day to day. And then we'll come back to the grants appeal. Thank you, Chair. That was great, thank you. Do you want to come forward, Nick? The little switch, um, if you move that. Oh, should be on. That one? Thank you very much, Councillor Holt, and thank you very much, James, for the introduction and to everybody for the opportunity to talk about our project this evening. Um, James has started, but I um, let me tell you first of all what a, a bright box is. It's, um, it is a recipe meal kit with um, all of the ingredients ready prepared for a family to make a, a balanced meal for five people. Um, and it's aimed very much at families with the kids ideally taking the lead in the cooking. Um, as well as the ingredients, there's a very child-friendly recipe guide with simple instructions which will help them through the process to, um, to cook the recipe. And our aims with this project are really to, on the one hand, to, to address child hunger and child poverty, but through a fun family activity. Um, and, and that's where the emphasis is really about bringing the family together around food, both cooking it and eating it and developing cooking skills um, amongst the children, but also giving them the confidence um, and, and resilience to, to learn something new and to really, I think, fuel a future generation of kids who will be able to cook from scratch and take an interest in the food that they're eating. Um, we work, um, our kind of target, if you like, we, we work very closely with primary schools via Achieving for Children. So we're, we're targeting primary schools. I think the sweet spot is the eight to nine-year-olds, but primary schools in general. And the, the bulk, not all of them, but the, the vast majority of our um, participant families are on preschool meals. Um, so it is a weekly help to them with their, with their food budget um, as well. And we work very closely with the schools, often the inclusion officer or the family welfare officer to make sure that they're targeting the families because we feel they know who will benefit from this program the best. And the program runs, um, as you will read, it runs actually throughout the school year. So the schools will nominate families and they'll be in the program then for, um, for 36 weeks, which we divide across three 12 weekly terms. And, and we think that that's, that's the right time frame to actually bring about behavior change and, and getting habits to stick 
and have a lasting impact on, on the families. Um, as James said, the project um, started, in, started uh, in COVID. So obviously, when we were delivering boxes to, to, to families, it was great and a great activity when everybody was at home together, but continued as schools also opened up. Um, we started back in May 2020 with 10 families. Um, but as our, I think as kind of news of the project and also we uh, working with a team for children to, to network across the schools, um, we soon did 100, and then, as James said, by, by the end of the summer, we were doing 290 boxes, delivering every Friday um, to the families across Kingston and Richmond. And we're very proud to have our roots in Kingston. And, and the great thing is we've all already started exporting the concept because through a partnership with um, the South London Mission in Southwark, we've, we've now, they're partnering with us to deliver the program to four schools over there. So we're, we're very proud that we've, we've started that, but it's, it's now going somewhere else. And I think the best way for me to, um, to really share the impact of the project is, is through some of the feedback we've had. We, we get informal feedback from families and schools, and we also do a survey at the end of the year to just gauge are we, are we hitting our objectives. And I think what people are telling us is, uh, I mean, th th the parents are saying, they never understood how much their kids would enjoy or could do. They, they never had the, the confidence to give them things to do in the kitchen, but the, the kids have kind of really taken to this project very enthusiastically, wanting to cook things. We heard that children were trying new foods because they'd been a part of the process. Um, and the families fed back that um, they would, uh, I think almost 100% said they would try the recipes again, which is obviously the objective. We want to create kind of self-sufficiency and get the families to try these recipes again for themselves. Um, but also that it was um, the parents had learned some cooking skills as well, and that this was now often the, the one meal that the families would sit down and cook and eat together on a week because of the focus. It arrives on a Friday at school, and it tends to be the Friday evening dinner which the family all participate in. So we're very proud to be kind of bringing families together. Um, and the, the other thing to, to note about the project is um, it's run by um, an amazing team of volunteers. So we have across the week leading up to the Friday and, and mainly on the Thursday and Friday, we have a team of volunteers. Jane is behind me, has, has kindly joined us this evening as well. Um, sh she comes in and helps on the Thursday. And um, so it's, it's really run by volunteers for the community. Um, and I, I think we, we also work, we, we want to keep our kind of impact local. So we, we work with a local butcher, we work with um, local greengrocers to, to make sure that they're impacting and, and they've got their customers also to contribute to the project. So we're trying to kind of really tie in a community feel to the project as well. And, and so what we're doing now is we want to carry on the basics we've got. We've, we've built up in last year into the new school year um, and, and work across as many schools. And this year, I think we've, we've looked at the, the schools and we want to really target um, Nolmead in this particular neighborhood um, with this grant to get families there. And they've, having had initial conversations, they've embraced the project very enthusiastically and already have a, an idea of families who may benefit should we be successful. Um, and I could go on for a long time, but maybe if I offer you the opportunity to ask me some questions, because um, I, I hope you've got some, and I, if that's okay. Thank, thank you for that introduction, Nick. Um, I, I, I don't know if any councillors would like to, uh, Councillor Calder Hughes. Oh, oh, yeah, it is on, sorry. Right. Um, it sounds absolutely amazing. I'm really, really passionate about children learning to cook, and I'm really passionate about um, it's you know it just sounds amazing my one question would be if it's running throughout the school term is there any scope to expand it to the school holidays as well or is that something that you foresee would be a strategic goal for the bright box going forwards um great question thank you um so during the covid year we did actually and, and partly because of the the, the the obviously the pandemic situation we did run through the school holidays what's happened since then obviously is that the government has provided funding for the half, the, I don't know where that, the half the holiday and activity funds. So we, 
we do do the bright boxes, but we work actually together with the council via the HAP programme to provide um, a, a slightly different form of bright box for four days a week for one of the weeks of the holiday. So I think because that, that there is that funding stream there and we're, a, we're an organisation which can contribute to that programme, that's the way we're doing it in the holidays at the moment. And, and we're always open, you know, funding permitting, we're always open to supporting the holiday. Obviously, we have our volunteers to consider and having the, the manpower to do it. But as I say, we did it last year and we're certainly open to that. But we think working with the HAF programme, which is kind of a formal setup, is probably the most effective way for us to, to impact in that way. Thank you. Uh, uh, do you another question you would like to ask? Or you're that, that panel? Okay, thank you. Um, I think I've seen uh, Councillor Schaefer. Did you put? Did you say you'd like to indicate you've wanted to oh, ask a question? Just only a quick thing. Say, fantastic concept, and it's great for, I imagine, for children's sort of self-esteem as well to be involved in that. Do you find that they give you recipes, or they come back to you with feedback about their experiences? Would you love to know how that? how that works, that'd be great, thanks. Yes, I mean, th 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 again, another great question. So then just to, to pick up on that notion of resilience, it, it, it's, we call it bright box and it's B-R-I-T-E and that actually stands for building resilience in this environment. So that is very much part of what we want to do is to, you know, to give kids the confidence that they can do this. And so, yes, we, we do have um, both the Facebook um, a couple of groups and we have a, a kind of a confidential a, a private email where people can respond to us so we get lots of feedback on you know and you know some some families some kids come up with variations on on the uh, on the recipes they, and they tell us what they like and what they don't like and so we are I think that level of engagement is increasing every term which is very encouraging and we've we, we do put out calls to say that we would we'd love you to to propose some um, some recipes we got a very good pizza recipe from uh, from one family it was a healthy pizza uh, like ours but um, and so we'll carry on doing that more and more because that as I say that's the engagement we, we'd love them to feel part of the project and then it kind of has the the virtuous circle of them feeding into the recipes because we have a different recipe every week so we've got we've done 36. Uh, recipes and, and this year we'll, we'll kind of rerun the program because we're working with new families but we will be looking to introduce new recipes along the way and if they can come from the kids and the families themselves that would be perfect thank you Th thank you um councillor white thank you may i make a comment chair rather than a question please thank you just in case there is any lingering doubt about this project i just wanted to say <laughs> it is um, the most amazing partnership that i've ever known in my working life it is absolutely incredible the volunteers are amazing the logistics of reversing out onto the away <laughs> system on a friday yeah. um, scare me enormously but you do it so well and so kindly but the impact on the children young people and their families is absolutely amazing in my work we collect feedback as well and it's like nothing we've ever had before we have booklets and booklets of it when i got into the office on monday morning i picked up my answer phone message four minutes 32 seconds of somebody on friday night um, who just could not believe how amazing the health series was ours we have 25 books every week and it makes an enormous difference that was actually a 15 year old so slightly outside the normal age group she was on bell um, been off school all week very unhappy not happy getting back to school or anything and she and her mum made it together and it made the world of difference so thank you very very much for everything you do awesome well, thank you very much for that um, feedback councillor white and, and that well that i'm sure you can imagine that's very much why we do this and why we want to carry on doing it and why i think the, the scheme has potential and um you're right that, that, that what's been great that, as i say that, that, that coming back to the question of feedback the, the the kingston young carers produce a booklet and and it is it's the, it's the kind of the the sincerity of the of the comments about how they're cooking for other people how they've enjoyed cooking it and they've often got because if because if we do a standard box for five people and and it's just easier for us to operate that if a family has more than five members they just get two boxes that's the way we run the program so Obviously, if some of the families only have three members, it will actually spread over two or three days. And it's great to hear, particularly from some of the young carers, that if they've got food left over, they'll be sharing that with other family members and other people as well. So uh, it's, I think the, 
the positive impact is spreading um, widely, which is great. Thank you very much. Um, I've got Councillor Gander next. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you for sharing your project with us. It sounds amazing. Um, I just had a, a little question around, and I don't really want to add to the complexity of what you do because it does sound um, logistically quite challenging. Um, you mentioned that you're using local butcher, etc. I just wondered whether there was um, any opportunity to use any leftover food that would otherwise be wasted. And there are projects within the borough that um, do have that kind of um, endeavour going on. And I just wondered if you had any connections with those. Um, great question. And so, we, and when when we started this project, it was part of Voices of Hope actually operating the food hub in the Kingston. And and the food hub was very much about using surplus food to make um, to make meals for families who were shielding. And when we started Bright Box, um, and we were doing ten to forty boxes a week, we also used a lot of surplus. As our, as our scale has grown, it, it's actually kind of taken us out of that environment because we want to make, every family only gets one box and we want to make sure everybody's box is, is the best it can be. And if we don't, we, do, we, we rarely get surplus which will enable us to do 300 boxes. So we will, uh, so we have to use fresh, and we, and we can't use ingredients which only have one or two days shelf life because we don't know when the families are going to cook. They do normally cook it soon. Um, but where we can, we do that. And what I would say, we do work very closely with um, with various groups of, of the food bank in Kingston who are also collecting surplus. So they will they they do provide us with um, things like tin tomatoes and pasta sometimes. You'd be amazed how many great recipes you can do with uh, a tin of tomatoes. Um, so we do, we do use a variety of sources and, and surplus where we can. And, and as a charity, we still do take surplus from people like City Harvest and Fair Share, and we then have a role of uh, redistributing that across the borough. So uh, we, we do do some of that. Thank, thank you. Well, I, I, think, um, I, think I, don't think I don't see anyone else wanting to ask any questions or comments, but... I'd have to say that all, all those comments were very, very positive and the questions I think you answered extremely well. I, I just had one. I mean, I know you've done um, St Andrews and St Mark's and you're focusing on no meat and we've got some other um, schools in, the, in, in our neighbourhood. And I just wondered if you've, the ambition is to approach them or, or you already have approached them and, and, and what the kind of, um, whether it's been received well, positively and, and hope to expand to the other schools in the future. Um, that's a great question, and uh, and I think last year we worked very cl through achieving for children with, with to identify the schools in the front. This year we're taking it on much more on ourselves to have a, a direct link with schools to build a closer level of engagement. And uh, unfortunately, this question does come back a little bit to funding. Um, if if we would, in some ways, we'd love to be working with more schools, but at the moment, as we have a defined pot of funding, we we've. We've taken approach it's better to try and engage with one school and get broader engagement. And, and as we look across the, the kind of the free school meal stats in, in this neighbourhood, Nolmi would, would be the, the top on that count, which is why they've been chosen this year. I know St Andrews and St Mark's are actually quite disappointed, and, and given that they're just around the corner here as well, that they did have some boxes last year. And we, if we do get any extra funding, then they will definitely be the next school because they want to carry on with the new cohort. And of course, um, we'd love to be doing it for every school. And I think what we're doing at the moment, and, and it's been great to get some of your feedback this evening, is, is building up you know, the impact and the benefit this project can have. And then I think it, it will be, it, there'll be time to then maybe take this broader to get more funding to make it just more mainstream for more schools. Um, but we would, yeah, we, we would certainly look at our capacity to do all we could to support more schools if we got more funding. And I know that, that there are other pots around and, and things, but and we'll keep trying to do that ourselves, I believe. And, and my other co co comments about, I, I've been involved in, in fish ponds who were digging out the, the garden area um, for planting. And I presume it's long term the ambition to, to, to use that produce for the boxes or is, is that for another? Yes, no, well, well, I think that, um, 
that's definitely a possibility. Again, I think it may be some time before it can, can um, provide food for the whole project, but um, it's probably a good segue because uh, James had asked me just to talk a little bit about fish ponds because it does impact this neighbourhood. So as, as you're probably aware, Voices of Hope have, have partnered and taken kind of the, the project management role on for the fish ponds community park. Um, which is, has got an aim of encouraging the physical... And I'm, I'm reading this because this isn't a project. I'm um, encouraging the physical and mental well-being of those within this community. So um, I know, you know that the team have already started and, and made a great start in getting the, the corner of fish ponds um, set up with beds. They've had teams in to, d to do the groundwork, and I know they've got plans for all sorts of um, planting, food growing, insect... Um, habitats within the park and are very keen to get people in the neighborhood involved in that. And I think there are there's a regular women's session on the first Wednesday of every month and on the Voices of Hope website they're, 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 there's often specific days when they're, they're looking for volunteers to go and help out and get their, get their hands dirty in, uh, in creating that. And I, as, as we've said, I know the idea is that that then becomes a place where we can have community lunches, we can do have meetings and even outdoor exercise classes. So all those ideas in the pipeline, and growing food is will be will be one of those. And you know, and, and it, it would be everybody's dream, I think, if we could then marry all of these projects together to be um, supplying our own project with food which comes from local um, allotment resources. There's another project called Crop Drop which we get involved in, which is doing that, which is harvesting um, produce from um, from different allotment areas and. Um, providing it to community groups as well around the region, and and you have to if, please stop me if I'm uh, the, the other project that we've we've been doing for a little while now is the, is the Good Food Co-op, which is a, a circular not-for-profit veg box initiative where um, it, it, it's, it's a bit like um, Riverford or Abel and Cole, where full-paying customers will subsidise families who can't afford to, to, to buy the, the kind of quality fruit and vegetables getting a heavily discounted box. And we've been running that scheme now since uh, November of last year. And, and we feel, you know, th the time will soon come when all of these projects kind of dovetail, dovetail together to, be, uh, to, to form a real great circular whole. That was a, a long answer to a no, short question. That, that was uh, excellent, and, and yeah, so it's uh, and promoting those things um, in in our community because it is something I've been involved in, and I think some other councillors have been involved in as well. So it's um, really good to to hear it. Um, I I think probably if we um, I certainly would be um, would want to propose that we um, take forward this um, application. Um, uh, I don't know if I've got um, a seconder for this. Anybody? Councillor White, and uh, um, do we need to go to a, a vote, or are we just happy to unanimously agree? Agree, then? agree? Yeah. So unanimously, yes. And 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 what we probably would ask is that it would be great if you could come back and and tell us, um, you know, an update on it as well. So in in the fullness of time, if you can maybe you know, liaise with James to come back, that would be great. Sure, we'd hear, love hear more about what you're doing. Thank you very much, first of all, to all of you for the for the support, and we'd love to do that. Um, there's an open invitation to come and visit us on a probably on a, a Thursday or Friday if you want to come and see how the project actually works. And um, and again, this is very short notice, but we're holding a bright box celebration project really to um, thank our volunteers, our partners, and to tell people in the community about it on Friday evening on Kingsgate. So. It's late notice, but if you're free between 6 and 8 on Friday, um, let me know, and you'd be more than welcome to come and learn a bit more about the project and meet some of the other people involved, which would be great. Okay, thank, thank you, thank very, thank much you very much. Thank you for your giving your time as well. Thank you. Thank you. So... James, do you want to, to move on to the next application? Yeah, thank you, Chair. So um, very briefly, again, for me, the second application is also for a neighbourhood community grant, this time for um, £2,250 from the Surbiton Youth Marching Band, um, as set out in paragraph uh, 15 to 20 of the report. Uh, once again, the group has demonstrated that they meet all the requirements of the programme. Um, we're very fortunate to be joined, um, fresh from the Surbiton Festival, by Mr Ron Spencer. 
uh, these uh, band masters who are going to come and join us now and talk about um, the Brass Tutor, which um, the band wish to employ with this grant funding. So I'll let him do the talking, Chair, and happy to take any questions. Good evening. Thank you very much for the, uh, in the introduction. And um, just to introduce myself, my, my name is Ron Spence. I'm the bandmaster for the uh, Servant and Orbits Legion Youth Marching Band. Um, as James said, we were at the Servant and Festival on Saturday, which was our first public performance since Christmas 2019, um, for obvious reasons. And um, it was great to be back out in the public again, playing for the public, having great comments, and um, ho looking forward to doing more in, in the future. Um, just to talk about the band a little bit, just give it an introduction to the band. Uh, the band was formed in 1965 uh, as a boys only band at the time. Um, it's formed to, to, to perform at the Surbiton uh, Remembrance Parade. Um, numbers have grown over the years. Uh, we started off with, I think it was not, oh, well, I wasn't there by the way, but it was nine members. Um, in 2000, we finally um, moved into the, the, the millennium we, and, and invited girls into the band, and now they are the predominant um, members of the band, uh, far better than the boys at times, um, quite a lot of the time. And uh, we perform locally, nationally, things like the Lord Mayor Show, uh, New Year's Day Parade in London, uh, the Queen's Golden Jubilee, uh, and things like that, and also internationally, or certainly in Europe, uh, in Rome, Paris, Normandy, uh, in Germany, and things like that. And we, we travel, we try to travel as much as we can, and, um, and give our youngsters that opportunity to, to travel abroad and play music. Um, we are a, a, a non-profit organisation, predominantly set up to um, provide young people with a, a route to music. And um, the band, although, as, as, as you've ever heard us, we sound absolutely brilliant at times, um, we don't actually have or, or always had a full structure for music reading. And what we want to do is put a project in place, particularly for our brass section, but actually the whole band would benefit, it is to have a, a, for our brass section to have a brass tutor, a professional tutor, to come into the band every uh, week to teach our youngsters and our older members, but predominantly our youngsters, how to read music and how to develop them fully from being a non-player to be able to play or to read music, play music, play their instrument to the best of their ability and then to hopefully move on from there to take it on to possibly further education uh, or into a, pr a profession like we've had many band members do. As I said, um, Profession-wise, we've had members that have joined the armed services from the Royal Marines or the Army Band. In fact, I think we've got one or two that are going to be doing that very soon. We have members that have gone on to do higher education, A-level and university uh, in music performance and, and just mu general music degrees um, and have come on to do that as a profession themselves, whether it's from um, playing uh, um, musical shows or... Um, teaching themselves but unfortunately not in this area anymore so um, it's something that we really are passionate about to give uh, the members of our band and future members of our band because we want to keep growing our membership to have it the band is open for everybody to join but we want to make sure that those members get the best possible um, start at musical as they can traditionally the band would always be older members like myself would teach the younger members how to play their instrument. I've been in the band 33 years, and I have absolutely zero musical qualifications. And if you heard me play, you would understand why. So it's okay me and the other leaders, the other volunteers teaching. Some obviously do have qualifications, a lot of us don't. And by, doing, by not having that, we can only take them so far. And you, you take the notice of a football team, if you have your senior players coaching the team, they're only going to get a certain, certain length before they, they can't go any further. If you had someone, say, from community casuals come in to teach, 
who's semi-professional, you're going to get better results. And that's, that's our plan for um, our members in the brass section. But as I said, the whole band would um, benefit from it because we currently have a woodwind teacher, so clarinets, flutes and saxes, and I apologise if people already know that. Um, we already have that in the band, and he comes in every week and teaches our woodwind section and takes our band as a whole. And actually, since that's, that's happened, or since he's been coming in, which is a good number of years now, the band's standard has gone tenfold. We're not playing basic music anymore. We're now playing more difficult music. We're now changing the style of music that we play, or adding a different style of music that we play, rather than just military stuff. We play stuff from the shows, TV, classical. And we're, what we're trying to do is just broaden everyone's um, horizons when it comes to music. And by doing this, uh, the band was always set up to, how can I put it? Uh, it's, it was set up really to, for, for people that didn't have a lot of money to be able to do music. You know, when I joined, it was nine pound a year to be in the band. Um, it's now 30 pounds a year to be in the band. That's not a lot of money, uh, con considering that if you had a one-to-one -one with a music teacher, it's 30 pounds for an hour. Which well between thirty and fifty pounds for one hour. So the, obviously the money we're asking for would be split amongst all the members that would receive the tuition. Um, but if we were to pay for that, for everyone in our brass section, it would cost eighteen thousand pounds per year. And what we want to do is give those guys an opportunity to have that professional teaching, to be able to then pass that on into the public through their playing let their friends know, let other, peop other youngsters in the community know that they can come learn music at an affordable price and then hopefully will boost their confidence, their mental well-being, um, because it was pretty hard during the pandemic. We weren't able to practice, like a lot of other youth organisations. We weren't able to get together. And my, and my kids, I saw that myself, their social skills went out the window. They had really nothing to aim for. And that's what we want to try and give the youngsters in the borough, because the band is open, as I said, to everybody. We want to be able to give them the opportunity to learn music and take their lives forward a little bit. Um, and by doing that, uh, hopefully we, we'll be able to grow the band, more members will be able to come in and um, open that opportunity a lot more to anyone that wants to join. If anyone has any questions, I will gladly talk about the band all night. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we appreciate you coming along and telling us that. And I, I know that certainly it, it's very well received, you know, at the Cyberton Festival and different things that you, you know, you've been along to. It's certainly very well received by the, the, the community. So um, I don't know if any of the councillors have got any questions that they would or comments they would like to make. Do you want to go? Council Gander? I, I don't have a question, but um, I'd just like to say how, how much I, I, I relish the, the having of a, a, I'm going to say brass band because I'm from the Northwest, um, but I, I think it's a marvellous asset uh, for, for us to have in service in itself and uh, really supports the, the getting the, the professional tutor in. And it's, it's a really economic way of doing it. It sounds brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, it's 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 sorry, just to interrupt. It's, it's quite the, the <coughs> borough of Kingston, Surbiton. Obviously, we're part of Surbiton. That's who we represent. Uh, but the borough of Kingston is quite lucky because it has three bands like us in the area. Um, my wife is in the other band, which does create friction. We've got three children who don't know what don't know which band to join. Um, <laughs> But it is, all three bands are, are the same and we've all kind of suffered through the pandemic. As I said, like many other youth groups, our numbers have dropped slightly. Um, but one thing we found is in, in this time is we've lost about 10 members, um, which is quite a lot to lose in, in that space of time. Um, some are because they've gone to university to do music, some because their priorities have changed. Um, but we've, yeah, we've lost 10, but actually in the last four weeks we've gained six and that's fantastic I mean I would love to have had the ten and the six you know together but we want to, to open hopefully by doing this we'll be able to open it so people then we can, it's not just coming along and trying to play an instrument 
you know, youngsters, unfortunately, not us, unfortunately, that's just the way youngsters are, is that they'll pick up an instrument and they don't learn it within three weeks, they start to lose interest. So we need to make sure that we really give them that opportunity to tune in to learn that instrument and music in general. Thanks, uh, Green. Um, that was really interesting. Um, I love a brass band as well. Um, with woodwind. Is the sax really a woodwind instrument, did you say? But it's, it's made of brass. Yeah, that's what confused it's me. One little I'm bit of wood on it at the end. Yeah, yeah it. tiny bit of wood, big bit of brass. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's beside the point. Um, I was just going to say, what you were saying about having the three bands within the borough um, and trying to raise the profile of it, I'm just wondering, I'm just putting it out there, whether there could be some kind of almost competition between the three so that you actually could... I know. No, no, nice competition, like school sports day where everyone wins, you know, the kind of thing. But something just to try and raise the profile of the bands, because I bet you there's an awful lot of families out there that don't know you exist. Um, which seems such a shame because I'm sure you would get many more people wanting to join if they knew that, that you existed. You can help with, I believe you lend out the instruments, don't you, to yep. those that don't have their own. Um, and I'm sure there'd be many more if they knew about you. So it's just a, a thought on, is there anything we can do to help raise the profile, I suppose? Yes, it's interesting. I did say my wife is in another band, so a competition might not be the best idea, <laughs> but... You know, it, we did used to do that, and it's a fantastic way. We used to do it in the borough. There used to be the Kingston Youth Band Competition. And, and um, you know, bands would come from all over the country and participate in, in TRC. Um, that, unfortunately, started to, to fade away, where, where youth bands um, sort of become they weren't trendy enough back in you know, the, 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 the early 90s, so the late 90s, I should say. So that sort of died off a little bit. Not that it's trendy now either, by the way, but it, it is to me. And um, But w w what did come out of that was um, for the past sort of 10 years, there was a, a biannual Kingston Borough Bands tattoo, which again was held at, at um, Tolf Recreation Centre, and it was held for, for, for there, was, there was five events, and again we there, there was bands invited from all over the country, um, and they came in att they came attended, put us on a what's what you know, a tattoo, so similar to the Edinburgh tattoo, obviously not in front of a castle, but it was a similar sort of event where bands would come on perform, uh, and then all get together at the end, so there'd be close to three hundred musicians in the hall all playing, um, which worked sometimes and worked didn't work other times. Um, and it was a fantastic way of doing it. The the only um, thing at the moment is, and uh, you know, I've talked, I've spoken to the um, organisers of that, and they are hoping to bring that back. We just need probably a year or two just to build ourselves all back up again, because it does cost money to to put that on. It does cost um, the, each indi individual bands to um, practice for that. It costs about eight hundred pounds just to practice for that alone. And we just need to build ourselves up. But it's definitely, you're, you're definitely right, because people don't, some people don't know who we are. We had one member join um, a couple of weeks ago, and he lives three roads away from where we practice, and yet did, did, did not know who we were. He, I'm sure they heard us on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they must have heard us on a Sunday, because we were having to practice outside, but they didn't know who, who we were. And, um, you know, from our point of view, and this is something that we are also doing, is, is community engagement a lot more, because being able to do that helps us with new members, and also, you know, opens it up, you know, it's fun to hear a band, you know, well, I think so anyway, um, it, it, and, and what a great way to see young people doing, you know, it, it, it's really good, so yeah, that, that would be in the plan to do, um, certainly with those organisers in the next couple of years. Councillor White. Thank you very much. I know it's sad to comment again now there's no questions, but that's all right. I was just thinking what an absolute pleasure it was to be here tonight and have two amazing organisations, the voluntary sector, and I'm a great fan of the voluntary sector, um, coming here. You're talking about food, you're talking about music, but actually you're talking about resilience and mental health and making our young people have the best possible future that they actually can. And it's especially important when with the funding situation in local authorities these days, we don't have the youth offer that we would really wish to have. So just to say thank you very, very much. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor White, and absolutely agree. 
Sorry, can I just add as well that in my role um, as lead member for children's services, it's something I'd be able to um, promote with the schools if that would be something that you'd be interested in. That would be something so. to do, yes, <laughs> definitely. I thought that was something that was in my mind was how we could get, because there are some school bands, aren't there, that you could link in with too, which would be, or maybe maybe some of your members are already in school bands. Yeah, well. and, and uh, Kingston Kingston Mu Music Service is, um, you know, again, it's another service that, that is provided in the borough, and it, there are a lot of musicians in this borough, and, um, you know, we would love to actually sort of connect with them in some way to offer, um, you know, because... You don't just play once a week, you know. It's something that we want to offer. You know, if if they've got, um, you know, children, youngsters that are, are learning, they can come to us and learn as well. Vice versa, because because a lot of our members are part of of, of KMAS as well. You know, they they they're in the big band or they're in the swing band or the brass band. They're all all part of that too. Um, it just there is. I would love to try and connect with them in some way that we can sort of have some sort of partnership. That would be fabulous. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. And that we can maybe take that away as a. Well, and also, I, I, again, just as I said um, to, to Nick, uh, it would be great if you can come back and speak to us because I think it's just, I think I can say for all of the councillors here, it's been really um, lovely to hear, you know, your experiences and, and, and hear what you're going to, to do with the, the money because that's really, you know, for us, that's the, the rewarding part of it. So thank you for maybe coming I'll along this evening. And playful and, and, and <laughs> And, and, and doing that. So I, I'm going to propose that we um, we approve this um, application. Yes. And can I have a seconder for that? Or would you, Councillor Gander? Um, if I second that, and a unanimous, is that? Yep. Yep. Great. Well, that was... Sorry, do you mind if I just give you an update on the last... Because I, I, I was, I was going to mention that. So um, we were um, lucky enough uh, to receive, receive a grant for um, waterproof... Um, max for our uniforms, which is really important um, that we keep those uniforms in pristine condition, um, whilst also maintaining the look that we have, and it's a mi very military look that we have. Um, as I said, we, we, we were very lucky to, to be awarded the grant. The max have been procured. We have them. Unfortunately, that's about as much as I can tell you, because we haven't done a band job since... In fact, we haven't done a band job since that meeting... So, um, so we haven't worn them yet, but um, we are going to be wearing them on the Lord Mayor show because it is going to be cold. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be windy. It will rain. The next day, Remembrance Sunday, it's always sunny. So, uh, we, but we will be wearing them on there. So that's unfortunately I can't give you any more than that. But they have been bought. They are ready to go. Well, that, that that's really you know what we want to hear, but also what you've said this evening coming you coming back for this um, additional um, uh, grant funding. That I think you know, that was really I think you know, I'd say speak from all, from all of the councillors here that we really um, really found that very very interesting what you were saying, and um, and we look forward to hearing how you've used the, the money and yeah. and what a difference it's made. Yeah, and and maybe even having some competition or involving local schools then <laughs> that yeah. sounds like a, a, a good ambition to have yeah, yeah of course great great thank, thank you very thank, much, thank you very much yep thank you J james do you want to now go on with your uh, neighborhood managers update Yes, uh, very briefly. Thank you, Chair. Um, just starting with the community plan, we have a few of our, what we're calling our plan on a page leaflets around. This is the blue one from the desk. So on the front of this, we've got um, the community plan, which the committee adopted for this year. Um, we're always looking for new ideas for the community plan. So if anyone wants to submit any ideas after having a read, the address to do that is at the bottom. Um, and then over leaf, we have a little bit about the council's community grants program, which you know quite well because we won two of the awards here this evening. Um, there's other parts to it. Um, there's different size pots for different grants, so that's worth considering as well. All of those programs are currently open, including the counterpart to the committee's neighbourhood community grants, the borough-wide grants. Um, that's a window that's open once a year for um, projects very similar to the neighbourhood community grants that stretch across the whole borough. Um, they're currently open, and that window closes on the 17th of October. Um, and also, Chair, I just wanted to remind the committee that there's a number of um, consultations closing in the, in the forthcoming weeks on the Council's engagement portal, so that's Kingston Let's Talk. So there's currently a consultation on the local plan. 
uh, the 2040 community vision and the Kingston Carers strategy, which are all due to close this week. So it's the last couple of days for those two. Um, there's also a consultation on the council's new gambling policy, which sets how we regulate and license uh, businesses, um, which closes next week. So we'd like to hear your views on that as well. And lastly, of course, there is the River Moorings consultation, which closes later on on the 11th of October. So you can comment on any of those consultations by visiting kingstonletstalk.co.uk. Thank you, Councillor. Mm. Thank, thank you, thank you, James. Is has anyone have got any questions of James? We're quite happy with to receive his report. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and if we then move on to, um, well, we, the, the work programme is, I think, is set. I, I would imagine we don't have any comments on that. Um, and are there any, I don't think there's any urgent items. Or is there, yeah, nope, so we don't have any of those items. Um, so I probably will say <laughs> that with a meeting um, close at 8.20, Three is it on my watch? Eight twenty. Eight twenty. Three. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, um, for coming along this evening. Uh, it was um, really nice to have um, to to hear all of these um, lovely things that are happening in our communities. And uh, I hope you'll take away our our plan, which is a, an evolving thing. It's something that we've started, um, and and it will evolve and 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 um, but change. But um, it's, it's it gives you a, a flavour of what we're trying to do in this committee. Thank you.